inverse function properties. Suppose we have two functions, f and g, and they are inverses of each other. So if f has an inverse, then it's invertible. Uh, g has an inverse, it's invertible, so these are invertible functions. We're going to call uh, g, because it's the inverse of f, we can write g as f inverse. So g is f inverse. Also it works the other way, f is g inverse. If you have f of a equals b, you can change this around and write, so if f takes a to b, then f inverse takes b to a. And if you write this out one above the other, I call this moving the function to the other side by using the inverse. So you can take f of a equals b, if you know the inverse function, you can apply the inverse function, and you're basically moving the function to the other side, but you're writing it as the inverse function. When it comes to graphs, a b is on the graph of f exactly when b a is on the graph of f inverse. This is not similar to any of the symmetries we've seen before. This, all the symmetries involved making one or both of these negative. Nothing's becoming negative here. What's happening is BA is on the inverse graph when AB is on the regular graph. So we're just taking the X and Y values and swapping them. And if a function is invertible, it has a single inverse. Another way to say that is F inverse is unique. So we say at most one inverse function, you cannot have two. You cannot have more than uh, two. You can either have one inverse function if you're invertible. If you're not invertible, you have zero inverse functions or you, you do not have an inverse. Now we're going to look at a graph. I already started out graphing uh, square root x plus one. It's a square root function. This shift is a shift left one. So here's the graph of square root x plus one. What we're going to do is graph f inverse. We're going to use this rule. This points on the graph when this points on the graph. So I'm going to write out the points. We have negative 1, 0, 1, 0, and 3, 2. Visually, the easiest way to invert a function, draw out y equals uh, x. It's the diagonal line, the slope of one, y equals x. What we're gonna do, if you like symmetry, well, all we're doing is we're gonna take this graph here and we're going to reflect it across this dotted line. So this point three, two becomes two, three, and I have to write directly on top of there. One, zero turns into zero, one. So we got zero, one. 2, 3, negative 1, 0, is 0, negative 1. So this blue function is the inverse graph to the black function. So if I label it, the black one, y equals f of x, the blue one, y equals f inverse x. Now, all I did was find the inverse, the graph of the inverse. I didn't actually find the inverse yet. You could look and see the domain in the range. The domain of the original function is zero, uh, 0 to infinity. That's the same, sorry, the range is 0 to infinity, which is a domain of the inverse. The domain of the original function f is negative 1 to infinity, and the range of f inverse is negative 1 to infinity. So this is how to invert a graph. One other thing to notice, if your graph, all uh, function graphs have to pass the vertical line test, when you reflect a vertical line, you get a horizontal line. So if you're going to have an inverse function, you need to pass the horizontal line test.